Well, welcome to the third segment in the Texas Realtors Global is Local Cook and Learn series, where we highlight our local global business councils and their regional recipes. Today, we are joined by members from the platinum award-winning Austin Board of Realtors Global Business Alliance. As the fastest growing metro in the country, Austin has become one of the nation's most attractive destinations for families, major companies, and travel. Today, Austin's Global Business Alliance will show us how to make nopales salsa, peach cobbler, and Texas cowboy chili, while sharing about the hot market and rich community in Austin, Texas. Joining us live today are our panelists from Abor Goulet Buzdag, Abor Global Advisory Group Chair, and Abor Global Ambassador to Turkey and Greece. Jeffrey Outlaw, Abor Global Advisory Group Chair and Abor Global Ambassador Commercial, and Bill Boyd, Abor Global Advisory Group Past Chair, and moderating for us today and joining our event, Christine Rem, Abor Global Liaison and Special Programs Lead. So throughout this program, if you have any questions for our panelists, please submit them in the Q&A section below. And thank you all so much for joining us and to kick off this event, Christine. Hello, uh, we'd like to thank uh, the Texas Realtors for hosting us today. We're thrilled to be here. Um, and we're so happy to join our fellow Texas Realtors from around the state. Uh, we'd like to welcome any guests that might be joining us from beyond our state borders as well. Today, we have three of our five global uh, advisors joining us here today live, and I'd like them to say hello. Hello. I am. Gulay Bozda, ABOR Global Advisor Group Chair and ABOR Global Ambassador, Turkey and Greece. I am with Keller Williams, Luxury International. I'll go and Jeffrey can get his mute off. So I, okay. hi everybody, <laughs> my name is Bill Boyd and I'm the ABOR Global Advisory Past Chair and I'm with Realty Austin. Thanks, Bill. I was so excited to get started. I was like, wait a minute. Um, uh, Jeffrey Outlaw here, ABOR Global Advisory Group Vice Chair and ABOR Global Ambassador, uh, Commercial uh, Agent with Special Agent Group. In partnership with the staff, the Global Advisory Group develops and oversees the initiatives of global programming. We also have 29 global ambassadors that represent ABOR with countries, international groups, and entities with a local central Texas presence. They are generally CIPS designees with a working knowledge of the culture and language of the country that they represent. In addition, global ambassadors provide insight into emerging real estate strategies, trends, and resources within their respective focus. The true heart of our global program is the Global Business Alliance. This group is a community of realtor members who are passionate about the global real estate market domestically and beyond. Our group has partnered with NAR Research to provide data specific to our region for our members. We promote a global career path that includes earning your CIPS, as Jeffrey mentioned, the Certified International Property Specialist designation, NAR Green designations, along with the Resort and Second Home RSPS, and At Home with Diversity, the AHWD certification. Besides that, we're also closing in on 500 Global Business Alliance members, too. So if you aren't a member yet, come join us. ABOR Global's goal is to have three ways for our members to get involved. Joining our ABOR Global Business Alliance, applying for a Global Ambassador role, think committee, but way better, and uh, to lead on our Global Advisor Group, like the three today. Uh, you can find more details about ABOR Global programming at abor.com forward slash global. And we love collaborating here at ABOR. So definitely reach out. Now we want to turn our attention to some of our global group's favorite flavors and share some tasty and fun collaborations. Bill, can you kick things off? Thanks, Christine. Uh, as, as we've all mentioned so far, we're so happy that you can join us today. And, and really, as we explore what makes Central Texas and Austin specific special, um, this is so interesting to look and, and see why so many smart, creative and successful people and companies are calling Central Texas home. And when you boil it down a little bit, we we want to just talk about some food. So for some, when you think about the Central Texas cuisine, 
many of things barbecue, chicken fried, steak, chili, collar cheese, pecan pie, and enchiladas. That is part of the story, but there is so much more. To truly understand Central Texas food, you need to look at cultures and experiences that have been infused in our backyard with ideas and traditions from around the globe. Each culture is stirring its history into what is now considered timeless Texas cuisine. And there are always new inter interpretations on the horizon. Many come to Texas from the Southern United States and the Mexico. One culinary example in the straddle that come to the Texas via European immigrants from England, France, Ireland, Germany, and Sweden. New arrivals to our area looked at indigenous ingredients and began to infuse those ingredients into their own homeland recipes. For example, the prickly pear cactus can be found all over the deserts of the American Southwest and is plentiful in the Central Texas region as well. Native Americans have used this as a food source of the thousands of years. The pet of the cactus can be eaten as a vegetable. The flower is an oval-sized fruit that has, has a melon-like taste. The prickly pear is a beautiful and healthy addition to your diet and is used for both food and medicine. Some prickly pear health benefits are said to include its ability to lower cholesterol levels, aid in weight loss, and improve the digestive process. It also still serves as a staple food for some residents of Mexico and Latin America. The prickly pear cactus's increased popularity in the Austin cuisine scene can be attributed to Texans' appreciation for unusual and distinctive foods. Just keeping it weird, as we like to say in Austin. And in 1995, the prickly pear was designated the official plant of the state of Texas. We're going to, to toss it over to one of our ABOR Global Ambassadors, Regine Nelson and Austin Board of Realtors Global Liaison as they show a few favorite recipes and ways to feature this Central Texas ingredient. We're here today to introduce you to some prickly pear cactus. There's a bunch of different ways you can use it and we're going to see how these crossroads have melded into Central Texas and how are we going to use them today? Well, we're going to use them <laughs> in my favorite way first. So there's two things. I love entertaining. You know I love entertaining. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite things to have is a margarita. So of course we're going to try a prickly pear margarita in this house and we're going to make some amazing salsa because What's a margarita without some salsa? And we're gonna be using the prickly pear cactus to do it, all different parts of it. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the prickly pear cactus today. Um, it's very prevalent in our landscape all over Central Texas. Uh, one of the cool things is if you hunt it on your, on your own, there are going to be a lot of prickles. And I do have a couple of them in my backyard. Mm -hmm. So be this one's pretty safe. You have to be careful when you're hunting them yourselves or you can go to your local Mexican grocery store um, and some of your finer grocery stores where they'll have them already done for you. And then here's your fruit, your prickly pear fruit. And in the fall, in September, it'll turn this very vibrant color. Similar to Christine's jacket here, it's very beautiful. Similar. <laughs> so we're gonna um, do a couple dishes. So let's get started. So we're going to start off with my favorite, which is, of course, a margarita, and then we'll get on with the salsa next. So the base of every margarita, as you and I know, is a tequila. For this particular instance, we're actually going to be using soto. All right, so let's see what we're going to do here, guys. We are going to do one ounce of each part here. And oh my gosh, I also forgot we've got tagine. So we are going to, instead of using salt, we're going to be using this, so it's going to be perfect. So let's get that prepped for this. Let's see here. So we're gonna use some lime juice. You do that and I'll ring them up get for you. One ounce of that, easy on the pour. Easy, easy not. <laughs> <laughs> we can go a little less easy on the soto. <laughs> All right, let's get some Cointreau in there. We gotta get some orange liqueur. It really lightens it up for us. I'm a margarita connoisseur, so take it from me. Mm. 
one ounce of that. All right, so let's go on here with the Soto. Tequila's crazy little sister, in my instance. <laughs> or in our instance, right? Correct. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna flip this over for the two ounce pour. All right, all right. A little spillage never hurt anyone. Pour that in there. Mm. Smells good. Yeah. It's a very pretty bottle. So. Super beautiful. Glad to be using that today. Okay, now we're gonna add the agave, right? Yeah. We're gonna gentle pour that in. There okay. we go. Nice that works. Easy. So let's up clean up on that bit. jigger. Yeah. All right. So. And the piece de la This is what we need. <laughs> beautiful pink when it is in season with the beautiful pink flowers on it. Now this is the easy way to do this. You can pick this up at a specialty store. This is 99% juice, mm -hmm. so tasty. Yeah, and it has a lot of health benefits uh, when you start reading about the, the history of why oh, the indigenous oh. people were using it for medicinal uh, as well as tasty. Mm -hmm. High in vitamin C, tastes great, and it's all natural fruit, so chin chin. I don't know if you can see how beautiful and pink this is, so nice. Give it a little bit dollop. There we go. There we go. All right. And if you want to hand me that lime juice, I'll pour some of that in here. And we'll get these glasses all that. figured out. So that good. little stick on there. Yeah. Get our rims going. Maybe put just a little too much. I don't know. Maybe in one of your jobs. That's perfect. You were a bartender in a past life. I haven't done that yet, but <laughs> it might be in my future. Okay, I'm gonna pour a little uh, ice in there. We've yeah. got some ice, and then we're gonna shake her up. All right. Now you say this is your favorite part, right? This is my favorite part, <laughs> so we're gonna shake it up. Get my, my arm workout in here. Oh, that looks good. That looks so good. All right, let's get some of this out on here. Wow, wow. We are gonna enjoy this. Mm -hmm. And this is just one of my favorite ways to prepare the prickly pear cactus. Thank you, ma'am. Next, we'll get into this, but we'll take a cheers first. Cheers. <laughs> That's very good. I could do that. All right, so now that we are sufficiently sauced on some prickly pear margaritas, let's get into the salsa, Christine. Sounds great, sounds great. If you're picking these from the wild, you'll need protective gear, gloves, uh, tongs to pull things off, be really safe when you're doing it. But we went to the grocery store and they did all the hard work for us. So they've taken all of those blades off and everything off. We're gonna jump ahead and we're gonna take those prickly pears and we're gonna actually dice them up. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can buy them in the store. And if you really don't even wanna take the time for the fresh ones, they even have canned jars for you you can pick up and use. That's how popular this salsa is. Yes. And dishes that use the prickly pear cactus as well as the paddles, which is sometimes called the tuna. But for the nopales salsa that we're gonna make, we are definitely gonna need the paddle to be chopped up, as well as some bell peppers, onions, cilantro, and some lime. Sure. But the piece de resistance is, don't forget your grapeseed oil. It's gonna bind everything together and mm -hmm. make a very tasty snack Absolutely. once or before you've had your margarita. Absolutely, so let's get started. Um, we've chopped up some of these and we're just going to put them right into the bowl. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to grab here and dump. I'm all about the easy. Yes. And let you mix some of that up. Don't well. be afraid to dig right in. And we've got a little bit of jalapeno in there as well because... Because this we, is Texas and we like that's spice. What we do. That's what we do. So I'm going to toss a little more in there and let me get some oh, of the nice smelling so cilantro fragrant. chopped up. 
If the stems are soft, you can go ahead and go right into the stems. You just have to look and see what season. We're starting to get a little to the end of our season here. Look at all the that heat. color, so beautiful. Yeah. And then, oh, well, our bowl might be not yeah, big enough. Magic. Well, you know what? That's what hands <laughs> are for, right? So we're gonna do some hand mixing today. And uh, we've got a little squeezer here. Some people like to hand squeeze it. I like a little extra oomph. Yes. All so right. we're just gonna do that. Beautiful. I'm gonna do one more. Awesome song. And then we'll put probably a tablespoon or two of that grapeseed oil in. To make that, I will tell you that the um, the paddles have a taste of a little bit of asparagus between a green bean, and it does have a little goo like um, an okra when you're when you're working with okra. So just be aware of that when you're going into it. It hasn't gone bad, and we do have some finished stuff there, but we got some good finished here. Yeah, you're just gonna pair it with your favorite chips or yes. anything. Let's. You want to do the yeah, little? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get that in there. And there we go. That's right. Just pour until your it's, heart says stop. <laughs> and that's just a nice light uh, oil to put on that. And there you have it. You have Binds your it all uh, together. Your salsa. Got the salsa. We've got some chips here. We're gonna dig in. Let's see how we did. Cheers. Cheers indeed. You can see the little goo. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Oh, I got jalapeno in there too. <laughs> nice little kick. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is cook with my boys. I have three adorable curly haired little boys and we live on three acres. So of course we have chickens, 33 chickens. I know that's a lot, but we get beautiful eggs from those chickens and we can use them in one of our favorite weekend meals, which okay. is French toast. Perfect. And because we are highlighting the prickly pear cactus, mm -hmm. we're gonna make some compote with that prickly pear cactus juice. We're gonna use some strawberries, which I love. It's gonna give it a little bit of a ting. Okay. But this is the finished product here. Traditional way of making French toast, guys. It's not difficult. Some eggs, some milk, some cinnamon sugar, add some agave if you want a little bit of sweetness to that as well. Then you dump that brioche slice right in there, pan fry it. Then you can place it on a plate here, as you see we have already done. And we've got this beautiful strawberry prickly pear compote. Now that compote, we do have to cook it to make it. So we're gonna take some strawberries and we are going to cook them down a little bit with this delicious 99.6%. <laughs> this juice and, a, and about a quarter cup of sugar. Of course, don't and, forget and the sugar. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit of sugar. But it's gonna make a lovely compote and then you can put some Chantilly or some whipped cream on top of that to finish it off. And that's French toast. So we've got prickly French pear, toast. strawberry, French yes. toast. Texas toast with a twist. That's right. That's Sounds right. fantastic. Now I, I need it again. We should. This is delicious. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Now back to you. It was a really fun segment, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Got a couple ideas about this prickly pear cactus. Uh, we've been answering some of the questions as they're coming in. Um, we will be sending everybody a recipe book at the end of the program today. Um, so you will get all the fantastic uh, ingredients because I know we didn't show every little measurement. Um, so that's coming along. So I think we're gonna just jump into Jeffrey. What is up next? You might immediately think of Georgia when the topic of peaches comes up, but Texas is home to some of the best peach growers and peach picking locations, thanks in part to our soil and climate. Personally, I think of pulling a peach out of my granny's refrigerator crisper drawer, but whether you call them Fredericksburg peaches, Stonewall peaches, or just Texas Hill Country peaches, they are all delicious. Whether you're looking for a pick your own orchard or pre-picked, we have all options. If going directly to the orchard, the orchard is not your bag, just hit the road. The tents along many of the roadways all over the central Texas sell peaches. Peach season in Texas is generally considered mid-May through the first week of August, so it's just coming to a close right now this year. But mark it on your calendar for next year. You don't want to miss it. 
there are really so many ways to use peaches, but one recipe in our discussions kept rising to the top. Soccer Chapman Thomas and her mama's recipe that came to us after years of picking fresh peaches on their family orchard. Charlie Clay has a special treat to go along with it. So please welcome two of our ABOR Global Ambassadors, Soccer and Charlie. And thank you guys so much for introducing our peaches. Yeah. Take it away, Charlie. Yeah, thank you all as well from me. Well, let me tell you, I heard that Soccer was making a peach cobbler. Yep. And I know she always buys too many. Yes, okay. I do. So I'm thinking, what do you do when they get overripe? I don't know. What do we do? Well, I tell you what, there's only one thing to do, and I called my nephew. Uh-huh. He's from Brazil, but he's a mixologist. Ooh. And he said, throw him in some gin. Gin and so peaches. I was ready to go. What are you gonna make for us? Well, okay. Here's the process. So I, I got the gin, mm -hmm. and then I took your overripe peaches, <laughs> sliced them up, and I put them in a mason jar. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, and that does look yummy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then after about three to five days, okay, I strained them through some cheesecloth. Okay. And this is what we get. Now check that out. Ooh, ooh, that smells really yummy. Now what's really good about it is this gin has botanicals in it. It has lavender, grapefruit, and pecan, oh. the number nine. They make another one that's Yopan. Uh-huh. But this is the one we chose for this recipe. Lavender grows here in Central yeah. Texas and pecans. That's right, Texas right. all the way. Now I do have to tell you. What? You think I'm gonna throw those peaches away? No, what are you going to do with them? Put them in the freezer. Uh-huh. And then someday when it's just right for ice cream, I'm going to put them with ice cream. <laughs> Bluebell homemade there ice cream. There we go. Now we're going to make a spritzer because it's summertime and we just want to chill out a little bit. And these and are really fancy glasses too. Heck yeah. I know. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> just about that much. Okay. We still have to cook, you know. Yeah. So we don't want to get too toasty for the cooking. <laughs> <laughs> we still got to wait on that ice cream too. That's right. All right, we're going to add. Ooh, it's sparkling. sparkling water. Yes. I'll turn that around so you can see. Left-handed pour there. Look at that. Yep. Oh, a little bit more there. Okay. Just a little bit of ice in there. Okay. Now you got all those botanicals and everything we were talking about. So let's continue on that trend. Okay. Here, I picked this last night. Nice. From my patio. Fresh sweet mint and rosemary. And if you want to, you can do these anyway. But we'll do this one with rosemary. And do mine with mint. Yeah. Yeah, because I love mint. And there we go. Uh -huh. You have your Texas Hill Country Peach Gin Spritzer. Let's do a toast. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Kind of makes you want to sit in a rocking chair on the porch, doesn't it? It kind of does. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> And soccer, now that we got ourselves kind of warmed up with that spritzer, what are we gonna do now? What we're gonna do now is make my, what I call my mama's quick and easy peach cobbler. Mm. It's gotta be good if it's got it's mama in it. Yeah, it has mama's in front of it. <laughs> all right, right, all right. Yeah. Normally, I would start with um, the beautiful um, fresh peaches, but because it's quick and easy, we're using peaches that are canned in heavy syrup. Mm -hmm. So you get the heavy syrup. I know everybody's on a diet and they're trying to do the light, but the heavy syrup gets really, really thick and it thickens quickly. And so it's, it's 
if you're gonna do it, you may as well do it with all the calories, none of this non-calorie stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with, we have the peaches here, and then um, I have some sugar, one cup of white sugar, one cup of brown sugar, and then I have one tablespoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg. Well, one thing I can do in the kitchen is help. Okay. Want me to take those away? Yes, you can. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And then this is supposed to be about a tablespoon of vanilla, pure vanilla extract. And mm -hmm. you can put the top on that, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. And then just a squeeze, just a little bit of a squeeze of lemon. So that kind of like the acidity kind of like takes a little bit of the sugar away. Yeah. So that's a tad yeah. bit. Just like a little squeeze like that. That's mm -hmm. good. And then this. Oh. Butter. Now we're talking. Butter, salt, butter and sugar. We yes. are rocking and rolling. Yes, now. we are. <laughs> um, all of the the southern um, recipes have butter. <laughs> all of them. Um, I grew up, and I'm just gonna break this and put it in here because what I'm gonna mm -hmm. do is I'm gonna transfer it into a saucepan later, yeah. Yeah. and then kind of like cream it all together, and then take it and put it back in um, my pie pan, which I have. These are. The, you can get these from HEB, yeah. you know, yeah. these are already done pie pans. The way my mom did it originally, always, is she used the peaches from our peach orchard that we had oh. in East Texas. Yeah. I used yeah. to grow up getting those peaches off the tree. I'd rub them on my clothes, blow it off, and then eat it. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. The best. That's the best. That's the best. So, yeah. yeah, that's what we do. We put that all in, and then we... Um, stir it up on the stove and then we come back and we'll put everything in the pot so we're gonna go to the stove and start stirring it all and up. when that thing hits the stove it's we're gonna, gonna know there's some cooking going yes, on right it's gonna yeah. smell so heavenly because all of everything <laughs> goes together so like i was saying earlier we're here on the stove and everything's all um together it congeals it starts getting thick you want it to boil and you want the the butter to melt and then this is the filling that you're going to put inside of the wonderful pie crust and when i'm when i'm making um one i do double crust some people do single crust i always do a double crust because i like having a whole whole lot of um a lot of crust. That's, that's my favorite part of the crust and the juice. So that's my favorite part of the of the uh, peach cobbler. Well, we got it on the stove. Right. Yep. It's on the stove. And so what we do now while that's warming up and the goal is to get the butter all integrated with all the goodness and the yumminess mm -hmm. and to help it get really thick. Yeah. So, yeah. Really <laughs> and so um, I take these already made um, pre-made pie crusts and um, and I unroll them. You have to have them outside of the refrigerator for a while. And they should be easier uh, to unroll. And you and get then, the nails for it. Yep, I got the nails that for it. It helps get started. It always <laughs> does, it always does. So you take a little bit of flour and put it on oh, your yeah. board like this. And then what, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to meld these together so that they can, oops, not my hair in the thing. Mm -hmm. And you use your muscles, right? You need to. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> use your muscles and you but kind of make them yeah. go together so, so that it fits in here. You're melding them together. So that just means you're just combining the two. Right? Yeah, I'm okay. combining the yeah. two of them together. And mm -hmm. normally you would use um, a um, rolling pin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or um, sometimes when I, when I was a little kid, my mom would take just a regular cup. Yeah. And she would roll it with the regular cup or yeah. with the mason jar. But since that has our... Or a bottle of gin. A bottle of gin. <laughs> it could be a bottle of gin, Charlie. Yes. But we're not doing that yeah. right now. So now um, that we have our filling ready, the peaches are ready, mm -hmm. we take our container here. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically roll this and then lay it in here. Yeah, yeah see? makes it so much easier when you do it 
when you use, see? Pretty Beautiful. awesome. Beautiful. Yeah, and it, it usually fits really well and you can move it around. It's almost mm. like Play-Doh, really. That's why I like it. Making pie crusts and, and cobblers. Yeah. It's like playing with Play-Doh. And mm -hmm. you put it in the corners and I usually push my fingers down like this. Yeah. And then we'll pour the peaches inside here. I can't wait for that part. <laughs> it's gonna be yummy. Yeah. Okay. So normally you can just take the peaches and you ladle them in or pour them in. Cause you may or may not, depending on how much yeah. juice you want, you may or may not want to put all of the juice in here. So what I normally do is just put it in and then I'll pour some of the juice on over it to make, to decide. That way you can kind of control it. Yep, you, you control easy, the easy, amount of, yeah. yep. I like that. I'm gonna put this back on the stove. You can put it back on the stove. Well, let's do it. Yeah. And then you put it, the top on it and that's it. And put it in the oven, see? Are you gonna meld them? I'm gonna meld them together. Okay, I learned a new word today on this. <laughs> this is great. Huh? Charlie and soccer's pie crust, or would it be? Soccer and Charlie's. I like Charlie and soccer better. Of course, but soccer and Charlie's. Okay, you win, it's your recipe. <laughs> it's your recipe, you got it. All right, and so then you just take it and you mm -hmm. put it over here like this, and you just roll it and roll it and roll it, and then you try to make it look pretty. Oh. You can do the edges like that. Pretty is pretty, but I'll take good, tasty over pretty any day. You and me both. There we go. See? Yeah. Oh, an artiste. My mama showed me how to do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we take our baby, our peach cobbler baby, and we put it in an oven. And? Uh, 375. 375? For about 30 minutes. Alrighty. Have fun. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, soccer. We got it out of the oven. Yep. It's test time. It is I test think. time. Yes. Let's try it. Let's try it. <laughs> And I'm a lefty, so this is perfect. Oh, okay. When it comes to food, I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> when it comes to food, you're ambidextrous, That's yes. it. Yes, yes, mm. yes, there's the peaches. Mm -hmm. You can have this treat anytime, because it's a quick and easy, mama's quick and easy peach cobbler. Cheers. Mm. Oh, let me get the crust. Wait get the minute. crust, you have to get the crust. Oh, I'm Ready? taking too long. Got it. Got it. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> uh huh. We got it. I know the butter. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that's my favorite. <laughs> and those peaches. Mm -hmm. The flavor's coming out. Mm -hmm. Sugar's got it even sweeter. I'm having trouble stopping. I gotta I quit talking now. I just gotta eat. <laughs> I know. I want to just eat this whole thing, but we gotta mm -hmm. finish up. Mmm. -hmm. Thank you guys for watching. We're eating, <laughs> talking with our mouth full, and um, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you. Oh my word, is everybody hungry yet? Everybody's ready for cocktail hour. It's Friday or Friday, as we like to say. Um, so hopefully you're enjoying some good ideas. We've got a lot of good chat going on. Um, so Galay, tell us a little bit about Austin. Austin is truly a global city. More than 20% of the Austinites are foreign born and we speak more than 100 languages. With a business friendly tech structure, more than 20 college and universities and a high tech, innovative and creative culture. Austin has become one of the nation's most attractive destination for the tourists families and the business. We have seen an incredible year over year growth in Austin. We are going to move along to our next central Texas food, Texas Cowboy Chili or Chili Corn Carna.
So we are really, and so we really share this one with the state of Texas, but it is too good to not highlight it. When enjoying a meal in Texas, you reap the benefits of a culture rich in diversity and history that is unmatched in the United States. African Americans mastered the art of turning greens and beans into culinary masterpieces, adding hog jowl, salt pork, peppers, and spices. Mm. The German skills of smoking meat and making sausage became one of the foundations of today's Texas barbecue, while chicken fried steak is an adaptation of German immigrant, immigrants' Wiener schnitzel. Venison, beef, pork, goat, chicken, eggs, cheese milk, and the beans combined with the corn matta. Chocolate, peppers, onion, garlic, and spice become the hearty, flavorful, and the peely food known today as Tex-Mex. Now we're gonna throw it over to two more of our ABOR Global Ambassadors, Lara Pavanelli, originally from Italy, and Sabina Macala, originally from Germany, to make chili con carne, or as I mentioned, Texas Cowboy Chili, the official state dish of Texas. Whether you're a chili purist or not, since this is Texas chili, we won't be using any beans. But if you want to make yours into a soup, that's okay too. Take it away, Lara and Sabina. to be here. Laura, what are we doing today? Hey, we are doing a Texas cowboy chili and uh, we have all the ingredients set out here on the counter. So we're going to go through the recipe and we're going to start off with um, the chilies. And you can see here we have several different kinds, but the ones we're going with today are these wonderful chilies. We're going to place them in the water, uh, hot boiling water for about uh, anywhere between 30 minutes to four hours. So they need some time. I'll put them back here. Yes. And then we are going to drain them. Of course, we've done this in advance. Um, and we are going to place the chilies in the blender and create our sauce. It needs to be um, a certain thickness yeah pretty thick and we can always add a little water off we so when we when we drain them we need to keep the water yes ma'am and absolutely we and we have there. it reserved right here i guess the next is the meat yes so we cut the meat into one and a half inch thick quarters texas beef the best <laughs> yes and i was surprised because i had never eaten or seen chili with actually good pieces of meat i mean Ground beef is good too, but it's very small. So this is exciting for me as a non-Texan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very different, right? <laughs> yep. We're going to put some oil in the pan and we're going to heat up the pan first. And then we can go ahead and add the meat. How many minutes do we need to give it? Like, I would say at least 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. And I'm gonna add um, some pepper and cumin. You want to stir it up right away. So while the beef is cooking, what else do we need to do? Uh, we need to chop up some garlic and I like fresh garlic. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> Just a couple of cloves. So when you, do, when you do it like this, it releases the flavor of the garlic. And remember not to place it on the meat too soon. Why is that? Um, because you don't want to burn the garlic. You want the flavor, but you don't want to burn it. So we can put the garlic in the meat while it keeps cooking. So now we are going to use the sauce that we had made before. We're going to add this to the meat. So we're going to put it in and there can be more water or liquid added as needed. And stir and let it simmer. So we can use the reserve. Also, instead of water, we can add some of this. 
This is all good stuff. Okay, and now it needs to sit and cook. Simmer. Uh, let's prepare our garnishes. Mm -hmm. So um, we have avocado, tomato, cilantro, my favorite. And so this is... And the idea of the cowboy chili is to be able to use ingredients that grow in your backyard. Which we have in Texas here. And I found interesting too that chili does actually not come from close to Texas, south of the border, but actually from Spain, where it originated. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that either. Okay. Now one last thing that we um, need to do is um, thicken mm -hmm. the meat a little bit. And this is, as you can see, masa harina. We have a, just a little bit. You want to add that to the yep. meat? So here's the finished product. Good. It looks, let's, it looks great. Yeah, let's put it together. Show me what you like for garnishes. I like cheese mm -hmm. and a, lot, a little bit of um, sour cream and a lot of avocado. It looks so good. I can't wait. I've never had Texas cowboy chili, so that's going to be exciting. <laughs> but you did it. I know, and it smells really good. So, ready to taste? Ready to taste. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> mm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Very good. Really good. Mm. Very well. We got it done. Enjoy. Salute. Prost. Mmm. Delicious. It is. <laughs> well, that was really tasty, and I, I'm ready to go cook some chili con carne cowboy Texas chili again. Um, the pairing um, that they used for the wine was a Tempranillo from one of our um, wine country, hill country, Petronalis uh, cellars uh, that they paired with that. So at the end, um, so you have that in your notes. We did put that in the chat box. So. Um, I think we've been fielding all the questions pretty well coming in. So, Bill, do you want to take it away? Sure will. Thanks again, Christine. We've so enjoyed sharing how Central Texas and our food has been shaped by cultures and experiences from around the globe. Each culture stirs its history into timeless Central Texas cuisine, and there are always new interpretations on the horizon. Our global, our Abor Global Advisors and Abor Global Ambassadors have enjoyed bringing you just a few of their favorite ingredients, stories, and recipes. There's a reason everyone is moving to Austin, or it feels like almost everyone, with a resilient and diverse economy, high quality of life, and entrepreneurial culture, Central Texas has become the go-to destination for major technical players like Tesla, Amazon, Apple, and more. We want to thank, thank the Texas Realtor staff, Brianna Muir and the Tiffany Wu for hosting the Global Spotlight Cook and Learn series. A special thank you goes to all the ABOR Global Advisors and the ABOR Global Ambassadors and all the great work you do. They help provide insights and resources for the real estate industry around the globe. We would like to extend the invitation to visit us here in Austin for more information about how you can join our Austin, Austin Global Business Alliance and our local global programming, visit us at abor.com global. Thank you, and we will hand it back to the Texas Realtors. Yes, thank you all so much for joining this event and a huge, huge thank you to all of the panelists for, uh, from the Austin Board of Realtors Global Business Alliance. Kule Dog, Jeffrey Outlaw, Bill Boyd, Regine Nelson, Soccer Chapman Thomas, Charlie Clay, Sabine McCullough, and Laura Pavanelli, and of course, Christine Wren. Thank you all so, so much. And 
Please stay tuned for our upcoming Cook and Learn webinars in this series and look out for a replay of this session on the Texas Realtors YouTube channel along on ABOR's channels. So with that, thank you so much again. Until next time, have a wonderful Friday. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Off to cocktails. <laughs>